Hello, and welcome to Dear Sequel DPA. I am Kendra Little from littlekendra.com, and a recent update is I recently moved a bunch of free courses on SQL Server and the Microsoft Data Platform to littlekendra.com. No login required. I even figured out how to make course quizzes work without any sort of data collection. So if you are interested in courses on, I've got everything on query tuning, I've got performance tuning, SSMS tips and tricks, all sorts of stuff on littlekendra.com. Today, I'm going to talk about the dreaded topic of SQL Server collation. This episode is called Everything I Never Wanted to Know About Collation. Now, this may not be a long episode because I'm not claiming to be an expert on collation. I'm just sharing you with you the things that I learned the hard way. <laughs> so these are the things that I have had to know whether I wanted to know them or not. So they've been kind of essential in my career. And this has come up because for whatever reason, collation has just come up in my world three or four times in the last couple of months. It's a little collations in the air. The first time I ever learned about collation was I I mean, this is many years ago now. I, I got a job in a build operations team, a little startup, and a portion of my job involved building out development environments that had lots of SQL servers in them. And this involved restoring lots of database backups to them, setting up transactional replication, doing all sorts of stuff. And we worked really hard to automate this, but it was still because the size of the databases involved, this could be a very, like restoring these databases could be a very long process. I was setting up some SQL Server instances, and when you set up some SQL Server instances, at one point you get to this drop down about what the collation is. And I was learning, I mean, I still am, that hasn't changed, but I was, you know, I was like, what's this? And I look at this drop down. I, you know, do the thing where you expand the drop down and I'm kind of scrolling through to look at all the choices. And then I realize I don't remember what the drop down kind of started on, you know, but I was pretty sure I had it. I was like, oh, okay, I'm pretty sure it was this one. So I reset it to the collation and proceed with the installation. And these collations, this we'll we'll talk about the collation names in a second, but these are kind of long strings with like code in it, like code words in it. It turns out I missed an important bit. I did not get the right collation on the instance. It turns out that having the right collation on the instance is a really big deal and changing the collation of a SQL Server instance is not a trivial thing. Like beginner me was like, oh, well, it can't be that big a deal to change this after installation, right? Nope, beginner me got to reinstall some SQL servers <laughs> later on because it turns out the instance collation of a SQL server impacts things like what is the collation used in tempdb and lots of other important things. It is really important to get collation right the first time. So in matters of collation, don't just think, oh, I can fix that later. It's good. This is one of those points where if you have any questions, <laughs> it's good to stop. So what is collation? Collation has to do with how SQL Server stores characters. And this is a big deal because how we store characters not only determines you know, like how much space it takes up depending on some choices we make. But also if we're going to sort the data or compare the data, and maybe we're comparing data by like joining on two columns together, or maybe I'm saying where column name is like a certain value, the collation impacts how that comparison is done. So it's very, very important the collation not only impacts how the data is stored in ways that are hard to change later, but also all of the queries that are running 
when it's comparing two things. Should it be a case sensitive search or a not case sensitive search, right? That, however your application is written, right? Do you want that uh, comparison to be, to find things identical if they have different capitalization? That's a big deal, right? <laughs> so collation is this sort of esoteric concept, but it shouldn't be esoteric. What we need to do is remember just to bring this up frequently and to decide carefully what is the collation that we're using for this database or if we need to use more than one, where are we using each one and why, right? So what is the collation for each database? And then make sure that when we are developing for that database, deploying for that database, setting up anything for that database, we understand what the collations are for that database. Because like I said, things like TempDB care about this. What about what is the collation we should use, right? So, okay, this is what collation is. It has to do with how we store data, how we sort data, and how we compare data. But surely, surely this must be relatively simple, right? Can't we just use the default collation in SQL Server? Well, um, the default collation in SQL Server, if you just follow along in next, 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 or if you're running install from the command line and you just take the defaults, the default collation in SQL Server is called SQL underscore Latin one underscore general underscore CP one underscore CI underscore AS. There is a documentation page which decodes all this stuff. So if you want to understand everything in here, you totally can. I'm not going to go into all of that stuff. A couple of very easy bits of this to decode are that SQL bit at the beginning. It starts with SQL underscore. The collations, there's many different collations available in SQL Server. If you even read Microsoft's documentation on this, they say the ones that start with SQL underscore, those are there for backwards compatibility. That's not actually what we recommend you use for new stuff. So like a lot of things, the default in the wizard is not necessarily what you want to use for new applications, new databases, totally new development. This is, in the defense of the installer, it is hard to know what to suggest as a default collation because for many SQL Server instances, people will be migrating databases that are part of existing applications that do need the server instance level to be set in a way that is backwards compatible, right? So it is a tough thing to know. Now, one other thing to know about this, this ends in underscore CI underscore AS. The underscore CI means case insensitive. Case insensitivity is the default. And this is the default for a lot of things in Windows as well. Windows is kind of, you you know, like it's not other operating systems. They are not all about the case and sensitivity. But I often find when it comes to data, people actually want case sensitivity when comparing data, but it varies. This is about usage and figuring out when we do comparisons, do we want case sensitivity or not to be the default when we are doing these comparisons? When you are writing queries against tables, you can specify and change collation in queries. There are going to be performance trade-offs. When we're setting our default collation, which we can set at multiple levels, this gets confusing. <laughs> but when we are choosing a collation, we really are thinking about what is the most of the use cases we're gonna use and why, um, how do we want to store this and how do we want to do these comparisons? So the default is not necessarily the best choice for new development. When it comes to existing development, we want to know, or existing databases, development using existing databases on existing applications, we want to know for the databases, what collation are these using so that we can get the instances at the right collation as well, because we want TempDB's collation to gen generally, like there's always exceptions to any rule, but generally you want a database to have, it will have a database level collation. You can see in sys.databases what collation the database is at. You generally want 
the instance collation to share that so that if joins and things are done with TempDB, you won't run into, ooh, collation mismatch that you then have to go in and either fix by adding collation hints to the T-SQL, or then you've got to go maybe change the instance collation. In my experience, it is super hard to change an instance collation. The, the best way to do it is to uninstall and reinstall the instance. And that's that's been my experience of looking into that. Now, database level is not the most granular level. When you're creating a table, you can specify collation for the columns of this type as well. So this doesn't apply to like int columns, right? This is uh, language-based columns that we are talking about. So big picture, the things that I've learned about collation, whether I was fascinated by collation or not, this is something that, especially when you're starting new development, you want to think about it carefully. You want to not necessarily start with one of those SQL underscore collations. Those are there for backwards compatibility. Check out, I've got some documentation, documentation rather pages on the next slide. At that point, you want to go to those pages and think about this. You're going to think about things like, do we need Unicode support for languages? And do we need case sensitivity? These choices all have trade-offs. In terms of Unicode versus non-Unicode, you can support more character types with Unicode. You will have a little more space you take up, right? So you just think about what you're storing and how you need to store it. I do generally recommend that when you have established a collation, you make it clear between all of the teams, okay, here's the collations we're using in the database for this application. This is the instance level collation we need as well. And make sure that all of the instances you use throughout the software development lifecycle are using the appropriate collation. This is also something that if you ever want to do a check in like a pre-deployment script, a lot of tooling for storing database code and source control has this concept of pre-deployment scripts that run before every deployment. You could put something like a check in there saying, uh, does it look like the collation of this target server is right? That could, uh, depending on how likely you might run into an issue, that could save you some headaches by having it halt things up and be like, something doesn't look right here if, it, if someone tries to deploy to a test environment that isn't set up with the right settings. In terms of articles that I have found useful, the collation and unicorns and unicode, unicorn or unicode support page, that's in um, Books Online, I guess the artist formerly known as Books Online, the Microsoft documentation. That page is quite helpful and very detailed. There is also a wonderful simple talk article called Questions About SQL Server Collations You Were Too Shy to Ask. That's written by Robert Sheldon, and he goes into loads more detail about collation than the very brief introduction that I've given here. So that is where I would go to dig in more to the topic of collation. Thanks for joining me today for Dear SQL DBA. I'm Kendra Little, and I look forward to catching up with you in a podcast soon. Bye, folks.